Please welcome back AMO President Lynn Dolan. Welcome back, everyone. We're about to start the Minister's Forum, and I would ask you to join me in welcoming the ministers on stage. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce the Minister of Municipal Affairs, Minister Morrow. Minister Morrow and I co-chair the Ontario AMO Memorandum of Understanding. It puts us face-to-face -face almost monthly and almost usually, you know, with smiling faces as well. The agendas are full. Ministers and their staff are lined up a bit how you lined up today for delegations. He hasn't forgotten his municipal roots, and I know he takes our perspective to the cabinet table. The Ministry of Municipal Affairs had, has, has had a busy legislative agenda, but I don't have to tell you that. You've seen our alerts, and likely a few more to come. Please join me in welcoming Bill Morrow, Minister of Municipal Affairs and the MPP for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Lynn. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure working with you, and, and let me congratulate you on your first year as AMO president. It's been a busy 12 months uh, for you indeed, and I'm sure there is much more to come. It's my great honour to be here with you at the AMO conference. I hope you have all been enjoying a wonderful summer, and a summer that no doubt has included celebrations in your communities of two very significant milestones. The 150th anniversary of Confederation and the 150th anniversary of the province of Ontario. Last weekend in my hometown of Thunder Bay, the Ontario 150 On Tour Concert Series put on a free performance at our live on the waterfront venue. Thousands of people from our community came together to celebrate and show their pride. This concert is touring across Ontario this summer and fall, stopping in 23 communities from Kenora to St. Catharines, Petawawa to London. 2017 has been a great year for communities to come together. No matter where you live, we have much to celebrate. I know pride isn't a fleeting emotion when it comes to the communities that we all serve. Northwestern Ontario is a beautiful part of our province and I'm very proud to have been born and raised in Thunder Bay, which if I haven't mentioned it to you already in the past is the greatest hockey city in Canada producing more NHL players per capita than anywhere else. I think I might have mentioned that to you once or twice. <laughs> Toronto Star, circa 2016. We all share pride in the place that we call home. It's why we're here. It's why we feel a great honour and privilege in serving our communities. It's why we work so hard each and every day to make the place we live the best place to raise a family, the best place to own a business or to farm the land the best place to coach amateur sports, or lead a girl guide, or a scout group. So before I go on, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the leadership you show in your communities. Thank you for your tireless advocacy and advice when it comes to working with the provincial government. 
Please join me as I applaud all of you for your commitment and for your pride. Thank you very much for the work that you do. The AMO Annual Conference is our opportunity to come together as leaders and celebrate our achievements together. We can also discuss opportunities to further strengthen our relationship. Our partnership has yielded tremendous results for communities across this great province. Today you'll hear me use words like respect and partnership and investment throughout my speech. I think those words symbolize how our relationship over the last 14 years has produced positive results for Ontarians right across this province. Some of you may know that my career in politics started at the municipal level. Representing my community was a great honour, as I know it is for all of you. I remember, like yesterday, driving in my car to my very first council meeting 20 years ago, thinking to myself, Billy, just don't screw this up. <laughs> remember you're representing your community and your constituents, and remember you're representing your family. I remember those words running through my head as I drove there that night. While I was serving on Thunder Bay Council, I became increasingly frustrated, I don't mind saying, with the relationship that existed with the province at that time. There was a clear lack of respect for municipalities by the government of the day, and nothing highlighted that more than what we call the big download. $3 billion shoved onto the shoulders of municipalities, including social assistance costs, social housing, drug benefits, and court security. The former government also downloaded costs for public transit and public health. And on top of that, municipal road and unconditional grants were slashed by 43%. Funding for building and repairing sewer treatment systems disappeared. We had a provincial government in Toronto whose agenda was centered on a promised 30% tax cut. To achieve that goal, the government in power at that time decided to make municipalities pay for its prerogatives. Those were tough years. Anyone who was serving on a local council at that time can attest to the severe impact of those downloads and transfer payment cuts. And it wasn't the provincial government that wore those decisions. No, it was the municipal politicians who were left to clean up the mess. It may seem like a long time ago, but those memories remain very fresh in my mind. They're part of the reason I ran for provincial office in 2003, and I believe we've come a long way in the past 14 years to bring respect back to our relationship. In the 12 years since, we were granted the privilege, to, or the 14 years rather, granted the privilege to lead this great province. We immediately put our focus on restoring the important partnership between the province and our municipalities. To illustrate this, let's have a look back at the 12 asks AMO put out in 2011, ahead of that year's provincial election. AMO asked the government to meet or beat the promised upload of $1.5 billion in social service and court security costs. Mission accomplished. In 2003, transfers to municipalities were $1.1 billion. As we complete the Provincial Municipal Fiscal and Service Delivery Review in 2018, support to municipalities will total over $4.2 billion, which has flowed through initiatives like the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund and uploads. The relief we've partnered together to design and deliver has significantly reduced the financial burden on municipalities and on property taxpayers. And this support to municipalities has increased by 264% since 2003. This means that a city like Ottawa has 124 million more in its budget as a result of the provincial uploads in 2017. Kingston, 28 million. London, 76 million. Kenora is benefiting from 5 million as a result of OMPF and the uploads. And of course, I could go on. Funding provided through the OMPF for municipal uploads has had a positive impact on municipalities in all corners of the province. AMO asked the province to stop downloading costs to Ontario's limited property tax base. Instead, we have uploaded significant costs. AMO asked for a new permanent fund for municipal infrastructure. In response, as part of the province or the largest infrastructure investment in the province's history, we're investing $190 billion over 13 years, we launched the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, 
which, which helps build and repair critical roads, bridges, water and wastewater systems in small, rural, and northern municipalities. The fund was first introduced in a 2014 budget. It's set to triple to $300 million per year by 2018-19, including $200 million per year in stable formula-based funding. This is predictable, bankable, stackable money. And we're cost-matching a portion of the funding set aside in the federal government's Clean Water and Wastewater Fund. This fund has provided over $569 million in federal infrastructure investments across the province. If you recall, it was first announced as a 50% federal, 50% municipal cost share program. Prior to the federal government announcing this funding, our government had already announced our allocations to OSIF. We realized that without further provincial funding, you wouldn't be able to fully maximize the federal program. And so I worked with my colleague, the Minister of Infrastructure, Bob Torelli, and the Premier, Premier Wynne, to secure approximately 270 million new dollars to cover half of the municipal share and ensure that OSIF funding could be used and was eligible for the remaining 25% municipal portion of the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund projects. This means that priority projects can potentially be 100% funded with federal and provincial money. Preventing these costs, thank you. <laughs> Preventing these costs from weighing down your local tax base. AMO also asks that the gas tax revenue be made permanent. Our Premier did that in 2013. And then we went even further. Earlier this year, our government announced that beginning in 2019, Ontario will increase the municipal share of gas tax funds up to a total of four cents per liter in 2021-2022. Based on the averages from the past 10 years, gas tax funding will likely reach $642 million in 2021-2022. That's twice what AMO expected it to be back in 2011. AMO asked the government to invest to rebuild and modernize our electricity system. In the past several years, we've invested more than $50 billion in electricity infrastructure. No more blackouts or rolling brownouts, no more smog. New dams, new towers, refurbished nuclear capacity, new transmission and distribution lines. These investments will serve us for many decades. Stable and additional funding for housing programs was another ask from AMO. On this front, our government has gone above and beyond the ask. Since 2003, the province has committed more than $5 billion in funding for affordable housing. This has helped fund and build more than 22,000 new affordable rental units and has helped repair or improve 335,000 other units. As part of our efforts to end chronic homelessness, we also launched the Community Homelessness Prevention Initiative in 2013. Since its launch, the province has distributed $1.1 billion in funding through this program, giving municipalities the flexibility to design proactive programs based on local needs and on local priorities. AMO asked the government to act to ensure those who produce waste pay for its disposal, and we agreed. Last year, we passed the Waste Free Ontario Act. It helps divert more waste from landfills and creates a stronger oversight body with new compliance and enforcement powers. The goal is to shift the cost of the blue box from municipal taxpayers to producers. AMO asked for help in collecting unpaid Provincial Offences Act fines. Two years ago, our government passed the Making Ontario Roads Safer Act. The act helps municipalities collect unpaid fines by preventing drivers with some outstanding fines from renewing their license plates. AMO also wanted a commitment that no property assessment or taxation caps could be introduced. We did not and will not introduce such caps. AMO also asked for a review of the Development Charges Act. We reviewed it and passed it, the Smart Growth for Our Communities Act in 2015. It made changes to the Development Charges Act and the Planning Act to help municipalities better fund their growth. Now, there are two of the 12 initial requests, interest arbitration and joint and several liability, where we still have some differences. I think we can all agree, however, that even without, within a strong partnership, there will be different ways of seeing things. 
And that's why we continue to have our conversations. That's what partners do. They work things out in a spirit of mutual respect. And I hope that you would agree that 10 out of 12 is a pretty great score. And in many cases, we exceeded expectations. And it's not the entire list of achievements we've made together. I point to the recent proposed reforms we announced to the Ontario Municipal Board. You told us you wanted more say in how your communities grow. In May, I introduced legislation that, if passed, would give local elected officials a stronger voice in planning for growth and land use within their communities. Among other things, there would be greater deference to municipal decisions, provided that they are in alignment with local and provincial land use plans and policies. Again, this reflects the spirit of respect that we have for the work that you do every day to make your communities better. I look forward to talking about OMB reforms in more detail tomorrow during our plenary session with Minister Nakfi. Under the umbrella of our Memorandum of Understanding, we've heard your concerns and we've taken action. AMO voiced concerns about the unproclaimed sections of the Retail Holidays Business Act. That would give municipalities the authority to exempt themselves from the Act if they pass a bylaw on holiday retail business closures. This authority has been a long-standing ask of municipalities. As a result of these conversations, the province proclaimed this section of the Act at the end of last year. Provincial municipal discussions also helped the province refine the OMPF allocation formula. This is all a testament to the strength of your leadership and our partnership. Never again should this partnership be allowed to disintegrate to a point where we see unfair downloading and forced municipal amalgamations. I'd like to get a little more specific, if I can, about infrastructure investments, because I believe these investments are critical in helping municipalities catch up, build, and move ahead. In every single community, large, medium, small, rural, or remote. In eastern Ontario, projects have been approved from Petawawa to Perth. The impact of these investments has touched literally every corner of the region, with various streams of funding supporting multiple projects. Let me give a few examples of what this looks like on the ground. It looks like critical upgrades to the Picton Water Treatment Plant. Prince Edward County received nearly $738,000 through OSIF for this project. By improving the chlorine system and rehabbing the filters, water quality will be improved. That makes for a safer community while protecting the environment. We want municipalities to determine their own infrastructure priorities, much as Picton did. I use the word investment when I talk about infrastructure because research shows that for every 100 million of public infrastructure investment in Ontario, GDP is boosted by 114 million. That's the multiplying effect of infrastructure building at work. And in our beautiful nation's capital and host city for this conference, here in Ottawa, we have committed 1.9 billion to help get you moving. The Ottawa LRT is already under construction. Once completed, the world-class Confederation line will have 13 stations and will feature a 2.5 kilometer downtown tunnel. Ottawa has been looking to the future. The line will accommodate Ottawa's growing ridership for years to come. In Northern Ontario, projects have been approved from Sudbury to Sioux Lookout and all communities in between. I can tell you these investments have made a real impact in supporting economic development in my part of the world. Let me show you a few examples of what these investments look like. In Sault Ste. Marie, it looks like a brand new Fort Creek aqueduct. That's a $31 million project funded by the Ontario Small Communities Fund, the federal government, and the city. It's due to be finished in 2021. The aqueduct is under the sidewalk, out of sight and out of mind for most Sault Ste. Marie residents, but it's vital to the city's flood control. Building infrastructure can also be about building community. Ontario funded the construction of a new community centre at White Sand First Nation. It's located about 250 kilometres northeast of Thunder Bay. The building hosts community events, provides recreation, delivers training, traditional teachings and health programs to community members. It also provides office space for organisations working to advance social and economic development in the region. Funding came from the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation, the Aboriginal Community Capital Grant Program, and the Trillium Foundation. 
And just a few weeks ago, I stood with my colleague Eric Hoskins as we announced funding for the construction and renovation of more than 20,000 square feet at the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Centre. This investment will help to establish a new comprehensive cardiovascular surgery facility in Thunder Bay, meaning residents in my community won't have to fly to Ottawa or to Toronto or Hamilton to receive the care they need, building on an angioplasty program and a vascular surgery program that when fully implemented will service and provide care to about 1,700 people annually from Thunder Bay and District. In the central region of Ontario, projects have been approved from Barrie to Burlington. Shovels are in the ground across this region. Numerous bridges are being repaired or replaced along major highways. Here are just a few examples of how these investments are benefiting municipalities. Thanks to funding from the province's gas tax program and support from Metrolinx's transit procurement initiative, Bracebridge was able to purchase an accessible low floor bus. Now you might not have realized that Bracebridge had a transit system. It does, and it helps quite a few people to get around. Georgian College in Barrie is also benefiting from our infrastructure investments. The college is getting a new advanced technology innovation and research center. 56,000 square feet of engineering labs, multi-use technology classrooms and research and commercialization spaces. The federal government, Ontario, Simcoe County and the city of Barrie are all contributing to this $30 million project. In the city of Hamilton, Ontario funded the West Harbour GO station and provided full capital funding for the city's LRT project. In southwestern Ontario, projects have been approved from Windsor to Wyerton. New modern infrastructure is helping to revitalize communities and improve the quality of life for residents across this large swath of province. What do these investments look like? The municipality of West Perth received funding to rehab the Blanchard Street Bridge. A budget of 999,000 came out of last year's Connecting Links program. West Perth also received nearly 400,000 more to resurface Blanchard Street from Frank Street to Highway 8. Mayor McKenzie has said the project should be completed by the end of the summer. In the Waterloo-Wellington area, the provincial government is funding a new hospital. Construction on the new Groves Memorial Community Hospital starting this summer between Alora and Fergus. It will feature 45 inpatient beds and replace the existing Groves Memorial Community Hospital in Fergus. We're investing in these projects because we're committed to building your municipalities up. Ontario's towns and cities are wonderful places to live, work, and raise our families. And that's a credit to the work that you do. No matter where we live, we are truly blessed to have a strong and thriving community in which to live, and an extraordinary quality of life. That didn't just happen by chance. My mother and father worked long hours, hard together, to build a thriving corner store business in Thunder Bay that supported our family of six. I remember 14 and a half hour days, times 365, times nine years. Never any holidays, no pension plan, no sick days. My father still had time to volunteer in minor sports, working part-time jobs, serving as an umpire and also a league administrator, and even called upon to umpire at the 1972 and 1974 Little League World Series representing Canada. And when I need my inspiration, I simply think about my parents and my family, like many of you do. I remember what they did for me and my brothers and sister to ensure that we had what we needed to succeed. And now it falls to our generation to continue making Ontario stronger for our children and our grandchildren. Giving them a place they are proud to call home is the most important thing that we can do. I want you to know that our government will continue to partner with you to listen and to respond to your needs, to help you build a bright future in your community I thank you for everything that you do to keep our province vibrant, and I look forward to the rest of the conference. Thank you all for being here today.